Hey, Kerry here with Best of U.S. I um, wanted to talk to you about an article that I read this week in uh, USA Today. It's entitled uh, 2020 and Beyond, Where is AI uh, Going? And it's, it's written by um, Edward Begg, B-A-I-G. He does a real good job of following technology, and I, I enjoy reading him. First of all, let me explain this. Uh, I had eyelid surgery yesterday, about 30 hours ago, in fact, and uh, that's why my eyes are the way they are. That'll go away with time. But I thought this was important, and I wanted to speak to you about it. Um, his article goes in and traces a story or creates a story that that uh, driving a car to catch a two o'clock flight at the airport and his uh, voice activated uh, operating system in his car uh, alerts him that um, there's a accident five miles ahead on the highway and he's not gonna make his two o'clock departure time. This is all happening as a result of the 5G in his car. Um, the artificial intelligence, which is being, is driving uh, the big data that's in the cloud that's being uh, activated through quantum computing or any form of computing and it's telling he's not going to make his flight and so the the system the operating system in his car so and that might be a Lexus or it might be Google or whatever says you're not going to make your flight do you want us to check uh, subsequent flights and, and rearrange and make a, a new reservation for you. And, and he says, yes, I do. And this all then takes place with um, uh, artificial intelligence. And he says, this is going to be available to us in, in the next five years. I'd take it a little bit further and say that it also then recognizes he had a dinner engagement, which he's going to miss at his destination. And so it's going to call the person that he was supposed to have dinner with and rearrange and make that for him too. This all is all about the, um, the personal assistant or the concierge service that I spoke to you about in a video uh, not so long ago that's, that, that is going to come and it's gonna be a part of our lives. He then goes on and says where this artificial intelligence will also be creating a virtual you. And that is to say that well, with all the data they have in, in, um, in the cloud and the pictures and, and videos they have on you, they will be able to combine this and create an avatar, if you will, that looks a lot like you, talks like you, and thinks like you. And that avatar will be able to interact with another avatar. He, he uses as an example uh, Deepak Chopra, who um, you could talk to and you could, you could ask questions and your avatar would talk back to Deepak Chopra and you could have a virtual conversation and, and you could learn something. He also gives an example that maybe you're cooking dinner and you'd like to uh, get some advice from Julia Childs, who happens to be deceased, but she has an avatar that is created through artificial intelligence and you interact with each other and you have a, a very delightful day with Ju Julia and you, you cook your evening dinner. Um, and he's saying these things are no more than a year, two years in, in the future. And I agree with him. Uh, we are moving extremely fast as a result of, of 5G, uh, as a result of uh, artificial intelligence and, and quantum computing is going to push it even faster. That may be a little bit further down the road. So what he doesn't go into that kind of, I wish he would, but maybe that's not his, his gig. And so is who do you invest in? Do you invest in the people who are developing the software to, to bring this AI and this 5G and, and put me in the kitchen with Julia Childs? Or do you, do you invest in the company that's going to deliver it to me, whether it be my, my phone service or do you do, do invest in the company that's going to make all this possible? And this is what I believe, and that is the people who have the data, who have access to the computing power, and uh, are and have then the access to 
the startup companies who are going to put this together because they have the big deep pop deep pockets and they're probably going to invest in them long before I could ever find them and that's who you invest in and and that then comes back to my belief that that the 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 investments need to be in the big nine if you don't know what the big nine is uh, that's the nine companies that uh, Amy Webb who is the um, author of the big nine it says that it basically has control of the data around the world and they're going to be the driving force in the next 10 to 20 years of what's going to happen in our world and that's where you need to invest and i've mentioned them before and and uh, you know it's amazon apple microsoft google and facebook here in the united states and then there's three others over in china um so if if you want to know more about the big nine in the description. Uh, I have a link to the book, um, and and I strongly recommend that that you read it. Uh, it's going to open your eyes to to how to invest in the future. So so the question, in essence, I th would think you would be asking me now is, well, Carrie, are you saying that the smart thing to do is um, to go and buy those six stocks um, immediately? No. No, by all means, do not. Um, I think everybody believes and agrees that the market has gone a little crazy and it's running up. And from my experience in, in the markets, I was a, I'm a retired financial advisor. It just so looks like the dot-com bubble um, where, where things are happening that just shouldn't happen. And it looks like the subprime crisis where people are going out and buying houses and, and flipping them that shouldn't be. And, and here we are running up enormous amounts of debt and the, and the stock market's being financed by the, the, um, the, 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 the financial powers to be in the various countries and interest rates are ridiculously low. In some countries, they're even negative. This just shouldn't be happening. And my, my belief is when you see something that shouldn't be happening, it won't be happening much longer. We had something happen on February, September the 28th that you need to be aware of. And that was part of the repo market. The repo market is banks for years have not been comfortable holding their overnight deposits in the bank. And so they, they basically um, sell their overnight deposits on, on an a overnight basis and turn them in for treasuries. They pay a very small piece of, of, of interest on it, but it, it's, it, it creates safety. And it basically in, in ensures that banks won't fail overnight. And this, is, this has just been done well on September 29th when they brought their money for deposits. Nobody wanted it. Um, and, and, and so rather than, you know, they go in and say, okay, take our deposits and, and we'll pay you a, a fraction of a percentage. Well, the percentage got up to 10% um, in, in overnight terms and still nobody wanted that money um, because they, they feared the risk. And as a result, the federal government stepped in and pumped the money in to make that happen. The reason it happened on February 28th is that's when corporations pay their taxes. And Well, then there was another scare at the end of the quarter, at the first of this year. And you and I need to talk more about this. You, know, you and I need to come to a better understanding of what it is. And when it happens, this is what's going to trigger the toilet flush in the, in, in the stock market. This is what's going to trigger it, and it's going to happen I don't know if it's going to be within the next year, but it's going to happen. And, and my attitude is I'm staying out. I'm 90% cash right now. I have been for a couple of months. I'm looking at investing in some treasuries. So I want to talk to you about that in a future video. I want to give you some more information on the repo market. And damn it, we got to talk about the, the elections. Yeah, Donald Trump has been holding this stock market up 
uh, for the last three and a half years. You need to recognize that. Um, so we need to think through together what's going to happen if he doesn't get elected, and even if he does get elected. What's going to happen w with the repo market? What's going to happen if the, the, the total confidence in the market goes away? We, everybody says there is a need for a correction, but nobody is willing to say it's going to happen, and this is why it's going to happen, and this is what you need to look for to signal it's happening. Nobody talked about that in the subprime crisis. Nobody talked about it in, in the, in the dot-com bubble. But you and I need to talk about it. So if you like this video, um, like it, bring me a comment. Comments help my algorithm. So if, if all you do is put in the comment, hey, I like that, keep giving me that kind of stuff, I'd sure appreciate it. Um, and then subscribe and hit that bell. I'm going to put out a video on the repo market next week, and you need to be notified when I put it out. Okay, uh, sorry about this. I wear the glasses because you can see it looks pretty bad without the glasses. Um, so uh, let's keep going together, and let's, let's be aware of what's actually going to happen in our stock market.